Well, welcome to Tony McGee's Pro Football Plus. By now, you know that Jay Gruden is no longer the coach. When we come back, we'll talk about where did the wheels fall off of this bad boy? Because they're 0-5, and the season's not even halfway finished. We'll be back in a moment. I mean, if you haven't thought about switching to GEICO, frankly, you're missing out. Uh, The mobile app makes it easy to manage your policy, even way out here. Uh, your marshmallows. Get digital ID cards, uh, emergency roadside service. Even Philo. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oops. <laughs> that cheeky little thing got away from me. My, my bad. Geico. It's easy to manage your policy whenever, wherever. Can I trouble you for another marshmallow? Gotta figure out how to be more consistent, and uh, you know we gotta figure out. I think another big thing we gotta figure out is coming out in the second half strong too. You know, finish games off. Uh, it's bad though. We gotta we gotta learn. We gotta learn fast because we're getting tired of losing. You know, 0 five is not good. So you know, some things we gotta get better. We gotta get better at um, you know, sustaining drive, starting faster. We gotta get the run game going. There's a lot of stuff we got to work on, but we're going to keep working, man. It's just it's tough right now. 0 5 sucks. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep everybody together in this locker room and, and just keep going. Uh, you know, we got a long season ahead of us, so that's that's the only positive we can look at. But 0 5 sucks. And uh, we got to start with these penalties, man. I, I played for the Raiders. I thought the Raiders had a had a, had an X on their back um, with, when it came to penalties. But the Redskins, it's, it's totally different. It's, it's ridiculous out there. And, uh, you know, I was getting mad at the ref a couple of times. And I explained to the ref, I said, it ain't true, man. I said, we're just frustrated. You know, these penalties keep happening. I know you got to do your job. I said, it's just frustration. So don't get mad at us if we're yelling at you and all this. It's, we're frustrated, you know. So we got to find a way to, to get it better. But, you know, it's hard when you get you know, you get a nice positive first down, positive first down play, and then come second down, get a penalty. Now, you you know, you turn from second and five to second and 15 or second and 20. It's tough. You know, we're always playing behind the sticks. So we got to help ourselves better. You know, without those penalties, man, we had a long run with AP, and man, they called a penalty. Like, we, I think AP might have took that to the house. And little stuff like that, it's just, that, that could have changed the whole game, you know. Just call, make their call, calls, and it's our job to go out there and execute and, uh, you know, do the best with the position that they're putting us in. And for whatever reason, you know, this fifth week, we haven't been able to get it done. You know, like, we haven't been able to get it done. For whatever reason. So, it's like, what do we do? We go to the draw, drawing board and say, okay, maybe we can try to do this better or do that better. I don't know. I'm just a player. Uh, you know, we just got to keep going forward. Um, put our head down, keep grinding. Uh, nobody's going to give us a win. Just because we're on five, we got to go take it. So, next week, we just going to go to work hard and, and hopefully we get our first win in Miami. I mean, we were able to get good pressure, but, I mean, it's easy to look at the defensive line and give us credit. What you don't see is the defensive backs in the backfield and in the, in the back in the back covering the guy, allowing us to get have time to get there. So, I mean, like I said, is you can't really just point out one player and say he did his job because it's an 11-man thing. And as a defense, we had a good first half and we had a second half that wasn't up to par. If you heard in all their explanations, they talked about a good first half but a bad second half. They talked about mistakes. Talked about penalties. Talked about not giving up. Me and my cast and crew here, Mike, Donna, Milton, and the G. We'll talk about this a little bit, but guys, tell me, it's frustrating right now. They're saying all the right things. At the same time, if you're one for 11 on first uh, on third downs. You can't win with that. You only got 11 first downs the whole game. You got 145 yards rushing, but at the same time, a wide receiver got 65 of that. And you got 75 yards passing. But then you look at your two running backs, and both of them was averaging over four yards a carry, and you didn't use them. Now Jay is gone. We can't blame everything on him. But tell me, guys, 
What and how can this be fixed? Well, Tony, you look at this Redskins team. They had a non-existing running game th during this 0-5 start. They had a team that committed a lot of penalties, which hurt them in drives. And then you had a defense that was supposed to be the strength of this team that has not shown up and really played well. They did for a half of uh, Sunday's game, but overall they have not achieved. Then you have Coach Gruden that they have let go as the head coach. But when you look at his record, like you said, you can't blame it all on him because this is so much bigger than him. But it has to start with him because he was in charge of this team as far as getting it together, getting them ready to play. And he had, for whatever reason, this season, Season, this team just did not play well overall. They were underachieving with the talent that they've got here. They've got good talent, and they should be playing so much better. So it has to start with the coach that's no longer here. And moving forward, you've got Callahan, who's already made some changes as far as how he's going to run this team. He said today that he was going to end up instituting the running game a lot more and start there, and then he's changing practices of how they do things. So already he's making some changes to this. He's a no longer the bubble where they had practiced it at the bubble when it was cold, when they should have been outside. But some changes are already started to make, to make you know, start it. But it starts with the players also. Well, it starts with the players, but I think you said one thing. It was the head coach. He had his idea of what he wanted to do, what you have to do. And look at his record the whole time that he was here. He's more offensive-minded, but this year the offense has been working well. And, G, tell me about this. When you got some guys that can run the ball, they, they're, they're averaging four yards a carry, and you got a quarterback that's inexperienced or one that's new that's coming back from being hurt, why do you not run the ball? Peterson was averaging four or five yards a carry. Why do you not run the ball? And you also have offensive linemen that are not used to even being in the game. So I think as a defensive lineman that you took this offensive lineman, you try to run the ball first. And I think that's what they'll do from henceforth. Well, I think a lot of it, Tony, has to really do with the discipline too. I mean, if I'm not a disciplined player, that's the problem. So if I'm in practice and I'm making the same mistakes that I'm making the game and there's no discipline action towards me, as a player, then I'll probably keep making those mistakes. Um, I'm a firm believer in how my dad dished out punishment. You make a mistake, you got punished for it. It make you not want to make that mistake again. So I'm thinking, if I'm a lineman and I'm jumping off sides and we're having <laughs> stupid penalties that we shouldn't be making over and over again, then I am going to run you in practice. I'm going to make sure, make sure that you feel like, we all know, when you run till you can't run anymore and that wind is gone and you feel like your heart's going to pop out of your chest, it makes you remember what you did wrong and it makes you not want to do that again. So I think if they can bring a certain discipline to the team, and again, I think it becomes on culture to the team. And as a player, I'm knowing that these mistakes are happening in players. The leaders on the team have to step up and be like, okay guys, we're going to take this upon ourselves. I'm going to discipline you. The best thing about the Gibbs era was he allowed us to discipline each other. If somebody mm -hmm. wasn't playing right, I was going to let them know. If I wasn't playing right, they was going to let me know. It's just part of the culture and the team. It's no, we're not mad at one another. We're just reminding one another we're not meeting the grade. Yeah. So when you meet the grade, you tend to win football games. So I think if they, if they come into the discipline portion of this, because they're a good team, they're a good athlete. You don't become a professional football player by not being good. So now it's just a matter of just connecting the dots. you got to start connecting the dots and winning games so they can get their fan base back. And then when we come to a home game in Washington, the crowd is cheering for us, not someone else. You know, yeah, that, that is kind of disheartening when you see that, and you got a crowd out there that seems as though it's more of them there than mm -hmm. there we are there. But at the same time, as you look back and the things that you said, you guys used to discipline each other, and you know why? Your eyes were all on the same goal. Sometimes I don't know if everybody on this team, I don't know if their eyes is on the same goal. I don't know if it's more me's on there than we. Uh, I think it just after they have to become a team. And when you are 0-5, and, and I've been there, well, 1-5 and 5 or whatever before, you really have to muster up each and every week to try to get better. You have to look at yourself and look at that person in the mirror and see how you can improve, and then you go about it. Well, Tony, what you can't do, though, is when the game was over, this is what I saw. I saw, again, one person heading straight to the locker room, as he should have been, heading to the locker room. I saw the rest of the team going over, to shake hands. And take self. I saw hugs and I saw <laughs> smiles. 
Right. I don't know. There's nothing. There's nothing. And I get it. You got boys on another team. You may want to go out there and, you know, call them up. I, if it was mine and I had a play friend on the other team, Thursday of that following week, I was probably over it. I was over it then. And then I'd be like, you guys had a good game. We'll get you next time. But then the well, day, let's talk I'm going to get you next time. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just looked at that scene. Is Milton there this week? No, Milton couldn't make it. No. Uh oh. Hey, uh -oh. we're gonna. Hey, that's that's. A, uh, we're gonna have to find it's him. It's not guys. Milton's fault though, Tony. It's Donna's fault. The reason yeah. Milton's oh, not Don here. No, no Tony. Said he, he did not want to look at Donna again. He, no, Tony. He said that he was more, uh, such a homer that he knew that he wasn't gonna be able to come today and tell the truth. So we thought well, that maybe. You know Homer or not, you got to tell the truth, and everybody can see it on television. What's exactly. Going on. And Gruden even said in his last press conference, "We have to have better performance. We get ate up in the second half." But everybody's been saying that, but no one is doing anything about it. Yeah, you just called on that great, nice graphic, Tony. You know, it was really interesting. One Redskin player was quoted as having said, "If they think this will make us better, it won't." And a second player said, said, someone had to take the blame. And, but there's one interesting stat this week. Trey Wingo reported that no coach has lost more games than Gruden since he was hired in 2014. So there was some justification for this firing. It was a lot, it was a lot of justification. His record in six season, Tony, was 35, 49, and one. And also, this is a coach that when you look over the scope of his career here in Washington, he could not make the second half adjustments in games. And it got worse, it seemed like, this year. My coach always said that you play how you practice. And if you look at that and watch how they played over these this 0-5 start, that tells a lot. Remember DJ Swearinger and what he said? Now, he may have went about it in the wrong way, but he talked about how they practiced and certain things that was going on. He alluded to that. And you could tell that some of that has spilled over into this year with what you're seeing on the field. But you know what? I don't want to live with the past. And one thing, Gary, we always knew. When we went in and we may be behind at halftime, we knew that Coach Gibbs would make the adjustments and give us the opportunity to get ahead in the second half. We never saw that here. If we look back on Jay's resume, even when he was a coordinator in other places, he's always wanted to pass the ball more than run it. But where the big mistake for me this year was when you take your offensive player of the year, yeah. a thousand yard runner, and you don't let him dress, that hurts the morale of the team and everyone else. That's just my opinion. Well, may I ask you one question now? This is Bill Callahan, who actually coached the Super Bowl team. Bill Callahan wants to run the ball more. Yep. Over the last several years, they've been averaging three yards a carry, Tony, not four and five like they did in the last game. I want to know what Callahan is going to do with these holding calls and these penalties, because in this game, Penn, Flowers, Bergstrom, Martin, and Moses all either had holding calls or had hands to the face or um, encroachment. I mean, they were all playing poorly. So what do you do if Callahan can't control his own offensive line? How is he going to control a team? But if you look at it, Mike, that hands to the face, the holding and everything, if you look back at the film and do your homework, you'll see I, a majority of them probably came on pass plays. That's where he'll get better. When you start running the ball, you have less holding. It's just man on man. And now I want them to start doing that. They'll be better right away. You have an offensive line that hasn't, all of them haven't played together ever before until this year. You have key people out. You have people that's injured. So to me, always the formula to fix that is to run the ball. And I think Callahan will do that. Well, Tony, what do you do with that, with the injuries that are right now hitting the offensive line? You talk about a Jordan Reed that has not stepped on the field yet. Vernon Davis was out, too. So those were two of your key people as far as part of the blocking scheme. And then you've got the sheriff that has been out the last two games with that left ankle injury and some of the other injuries that have taken a place. So how do you bring together an offensive line that's right now hurt a lot? Well, during the course of the year, Donna, you, you're going to have a lot of injury, but at the same time, you do your homework in the offseason. If you know Jordan Reed had the propensity to be hurt, then you make sure you got two up tight ends behind him so someone else can, can play. When you know that your linemen are new or you got a lineman like Sheriff, even though he's been a all-pro, he's been hurt. 
Trent is not there. You need to have good people. They let some good people get away this year that really could play pretty good. So what I'm saying is offseason is too important. You got to do your homework there mentally and physically. And that's probably why this team is struggling. You say how to bring them together now, you can't be concerned with that as much as you got to win that first game and change them mentally. Hey, Tony, everybody in the world thought that this meant that uh, Dwayne Haskins was going to be the starter for the Redskins. And now the Dwayne Haskins era has been on hold. It's been put on hold temporarily. And when we come back, you can stick up for your defense because they did play pretty well in the first half. All right, hey, 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 hey. I'm, first I'm half. Moving. Why do you let Donna say that? The first half. It's two right. halves in every game. Hey, guys, we'll hey, be it's back quarters, right, Garrett? Listen to Donna. she got to eat a little crow here, so uh, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> For one quarter. <laughs> oh, not nice. I can't believe it. Has Sophie opened up a wormhole through time? What the hell? Elle va pas, non? Pour les filles. Regardez-moi. C'est complètement de sa faute. Moi, je m'en fous. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Believe it. Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I'm here with Ricky Irvins and the group for my morning workout. I don't know what to expect, but I'm sure I'm up for the challenge. Got my water and I'm ready to go. But you know what? As I look at this, this tells me something because this may be a scary yeah, workout. It's about to go down. Trust me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Yeah, what you guys got going on today is a thing called Tabata. It's when I, when I start with something at the beginning of the week, that's what we do the whole week. So we did Tabata this week. And that is um, eight things, eight exercises, eight times. means you're gonna be at that station for four minutes and it'll be 2010 2010 2010 2010 2010 eight times and then you move to the next one so in other words we got the roll machine being number one you're gonna stay in that room machine for four minutes. <clears throat> if you go hard with it, then you can take your little rest. You can go 20 hard, but maybe like that. Then you'll go to kettlebell cleans, which is doing up like this. And once you get, once that 20 seconds elapsed, you rest 10, you rest 10 Two, seconds. Two, one, go. That's eight times. 
Sometimes we might have music that relates what we're doing, or sometimes we might just have what's going on now in your movie. completely totally different but you're gonna be on the same cadence so you wanna go check that out yes let's go check it out now could Tony do this <clears throat> hell no okay I finished that workout <laughs> Ricky wasn't joking it was hard hey Ricky tell Tony how I did did I stop did I finish up you did a great job I was surprised um, why would that surprise now, I mean, you I shouldn't say surprise you've been working out yes now, had you not been working out I, I would have died you up give you some water take you outside Maybe pump on your chest a little bit, <laughs> revive you. But you did a great job. But that would be Tony, right? If Tony came and did this workout, you would have to call the ambulance on him, right? It would be comedy. Right? It would be comedy. <laughs> he better leave those biscuits and those pies and everything alone. No, no, no. You need to make those biscuits for us. Yeah, Tony. I will be measuring. Wait a minute, Donna. I was impressed until you. When did you? When did Ricky work out? Number two, darling, you get a good job, but get a little bit straighter with your punch. Are you bringing on in there? All that side stuff. <laughs> All I know is back. that you didn't but show I'm gonna tell up. You what, I, that was a great workout. That was a great piece, and I really I did like that. It makes me know that I'm way ahead of you already. <laughs> <laughs> that would be negative. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this: Ricky trains a lot of different people, and. Uh, he, uh, and I, he did, these are the exercises he used on a daily basis for him, huh? Yeah, they do. He does, Tony. It was a lot of other people that was in another room working out with another set of exercises that he had. So I was in room number one and somebody was in room number two. But he has such a great setup there that no matter who you are, no matter what age you are, because if they had some younger people there, older people, you can get a good workout. He knows his stuff. Track is well, how, next, Tony. How do you, you get I. involved? How do you get involved with him? How can you find him? Does he is he on the internet or something where people want to join his his classes? Or uh, well, naturally I'm going to join since I know that I'm I'd be an advanced part of it anyway. <laughs> uh, as y'all notice, uh, I'm not in bad shape now. And Donna, after seeing you today, you better watch out. You, you see that upper jab that I had, that hey, knockout you know right what, here, Donna, Tony? I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm real impressed. That was a great workout. And, you know, I, and Ricky does a great job with it. I just want to see him do it. And I will bring the biscuit. And, G, can you do that, man? Of course. I, I thought you could. I, I, that's what I wanted. That, he got him. jokes. Of course. That you was a this, joke. Uh, no. You said Donna had, Donna had a stunt person fill in for her. <laughs> you guys never even you asked me You didn't see about it. the stunt person. It was a couple of shots. That we oh, definitely. Face, wasn't it? Definitely. You got, all you do is like this little change in clothes. I hear some hating there. <laughs> you know, I'm just well, you saying. you know what? Now, Ricky I'll can, Ricky can set joke. it up for all of us now the next time. If I hadn't that already went a, through it and crushed it, then I would probably participate. But I crushed it already, so. I noticed Mike's not saying anything. No, I said, you didn't ask me if I could go through it, but I will tell you one thing. Carrying that camera and tripod for 12 hours a day for five and a half days, I think I surprised you at how good a shape I'm in, young man. You was, and you know what, Mike, I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. up. And, you know, we just having conversations, because as you fans know, right now the Redskins are not the topic to talk about. We will talk yeah. about We talk about <laughs> other things on this show. Just like that workout, if they were doing that workout that they were doing uh, – this week, they wouldn't be fading in the second half. That's the kind of workouts they need to get. As far as Mike here in that camera, Mike, I've been getting calls from all over the country about our piece that we did on the Black 14. I want all you fans to know we will be doing something each and every week about them. But I tell you, last week I just get calls from newspapers and different things, and they all want to know. And what's so interesting about it, the way they said that they never heard the story from the Black 14. So I thank you again for that. And Mike, you did a good job here in that camera. But 
Yeah. I don't know if you can do that right there. <laughs> well, I don't know, but I, I tell you, you kept looking at me, and I said, let's go, let's go, let's go. I didn't stop one single minute. We even miss meals, Tony. Come on, we work so hard. Well, all I know <laughs> is I'm going to set it up with Ricky. Uh, you, uh, when you you're back in town, me? Tony. No, I'm going to set it up with Ricky to have all of us okay. in there for a workout. Okay. Uh, and, Tony, I'm going to have uh, him specially design an exercise just for you. <laughs> And Tony, well, you know what? I, you, I, haven't set, you haven't set up the basketball shooting yet, so don't tell me what you're doing. You don't want that, do. Tony. To, Tony, I wanted, I wanted to ask you one question about the wall, and the reason I did is you talked about them being active last week. And even though it seemed as if they, they almost disappeared in the second act, Settle did have some pressure in the second act. Kerrigan had pressure. There was pressure in the second act, but, excuse me, the second half. But most of their work came in the first half, with Allen four solo tackles a sack, Payne had a solo tackle at a sack, Ioannidis had three solo tackles and a half a sack, Kerrigan had a half a sack. There was a lot of pressure on Brady. And you know what I thought was really magnificent? I think, I really think the Patriots have to, had to give a second thought to those two fourth down and shorts. They didn't go for them. They didn't go for them, Tony, because well, I think the Redskins one. surprised them in the first half. I really do. What quarter was it? The first first half. It. There were two fourth and shorts, and they didn't go for it. One was two yards. The other was uh, maybe three yards. Brady usually goes for that. Well, they and got stopped at one, stopped for one when they were going Yeah, but one. two of them, they decided, no, we're not going for that. So I think you know, the, your defense had them on the ropes No, the you know half. what Tony said last week, Gary? He, they, they played together for one, two, three quarters maybe. But the second half, Tony, they still disappeared. Well, you know, it seems as though these games are disappearing in the second half. In the first half, you just think about two or three of these games that they've lost, they were leading. And so mm -hmm. you saw a better, I guess, format of how they would play if they were in the game the whole game. When in time you have three defensive, uh, defensive linemen that has eight solo tackles between them and two and a half sacks, and these are your front three, that's pretty good. Yeah, but I at the same so. time, as we said in the prior piece, the defensive backs and everybody had to do their job. So look at that game on Sunday when they were kind of tied or right behind at the first half. But then the whole game plan changed the second half because they had to try to throw. The defense had to work harder. And then the New England started to run more. So it changed the game plan. If they could have kept them in that same mode that they had them in the first <laughs> half. <it would've> been <laughs> good. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> hey, Tony. What? Gary is laughing at you. <laughs> Can I don't care. <laughs> Can I ask? Yeah, it, I, I just want to know what, what was the final score. Oh, thirty-three to seven. Can I? Can I ask a question about? <laughs> yeah. Go your, ahead. Your defense. I thought it was really interesting. Wait I, a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now it's always my. No, defense. about <laughs> the Reds. Can I, I'll ask you about the yeah, Redskins I mean, defense. Hey, hey, no, the, now it's my defense. No, this is really this is a really interesting question. You know how on all the talk shows in Washington, everybody talks about making halftime adjustments. And then the players say, and the coaches say, well, we're making adjustments all game long. But what was really interesting was Brady, Edelman, and to a certain extent, Belichick talked about making in their sound bites after the game about making halftime adjustments. They mentioned halftime adjustments. And then I think even Edelman mentioned that they had made some additional adjustments uh, at the end of the first half, and then they went in and talked about it, and made, they decided to go a different direction. So there are halftime adjustments made in games despite what the Redskins say. Mike, the <laughs> Washington Redskins got three Super Bowl trophies. Okay. That's because they made adjustments. Okay. New England has six. Yes. I two, two of them. we have right now don't have that. That's and it true. didn't happen. And I'm not going to pile on Jay Gruden because it wasn't all his fault. But yeah. at the same time, he was the leader of the ship and had to keep it upright. Right. I think that they have to change their mindset on a lot of things. Yeah. First of all, get physical. If you make mistakes physically, you can still change a game. So to me, before I even worry about a win, I want to worry about punishing people. Because when we was at, when I was with the Chicago Bears, we didn't never win, but everybody knew they were in a game. Yeah, Tony, could you answer this? It seems like on defense, when the Redskins fall apart in the secondary, is when they go into zone. Because when they're playing man to man, they they look like they react better. But when they go into that zone coverage, it's almost like people are trying to figure out where do I go. You know, they're all over the place, and then that's when players on the other opposite side are wide open for touchdowns. And Brady just picked them apart when they were in zone play. And then when you look back at some of the other losses that they had, 
the where they fell apart is when they're in zone versus man to man. Talk a little bit about what's going on there. Well, man to man, and then what you have to look at with this, with this defense, they have about six people, or maybe seven even, that weren't there last year, weren't playing together. Now they're playing together. They're trying to figure this out. They have different situations where they need to man up and shut this one receiver down or put him in a cover two where you push him inside and let the safety pick him up. They're still working on that. You got new linebackers. Just think about that. You got new linebackers that you did not have prior. So what I'm saying is the coordination of it needs to be a little better and they need to play together. But it is not all the coordinator's fault. You got a lot of new people that's trying to play together. Then you compound that with injury. So, yeah, you can play man, and it's good to change up. You can play man when you got shut down corners, and you got people that can shut down, a linebacker can shut down the, the tight ends in the middle. But when you don't have that and you have something that is un irregular there and you need special attention, then you should go to your zone because you may give up yardage, but you won't give up touchdowns. Yeah, but, Tony, that's, that's all part of practicing together and getting a feel yep. for one another and knowing what's working and what's not working. The key is when practice is over, if you know something's not working during practice, you stay after practice without the coaches out there to get it straight and get it right. I mean, that's just, that's just what you do to be a champion, to be a Super Bowl champion. Those are the things you have to do on an ongoing basis. Just to get into the playoffs, those are the things you have to do on an ongoing basis. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if the new leadership can, can get this out of those players. But more importantly, I always put it on the players. I mean, at the end of the day, it's our job to go out there and win football games. It just always has been, always will be. And it's our job to also go out there and make adjustments because we know before the coaches know what adjustments should be made, quite honestly, at those positions. We've been doing it our whole lives. We understand this. So you know, I don't really like to put the blame on owners, coaches. Um, don't get me wrong. Your directions come from the coaches. But if you're a great player and when is the most important thing to you, you will make that correction yourself if you know it's wrong. If you know it's not the right choice, I'm going to make that. Because they will reward you afterwards if you make the right decision but for when you, them. But look, when you got a, a Sweat and a Kurgan on a wide receiver, that's not going to be a battle that they win. Yeah, but, and that's what I saw in the Philly game. But we also England lost game. In, in the Philly game. We were man. Well, no, I'm just talking about the plays so, where I'm you got saying, a so Sweat and a Kurgan. zone or man Kerrigan. or either one. It seems like they do well in the first half. And in the second half, when people make adjustments, we don't adjust to their adjustments. That seems to be the Good problem. Point. We don't make Good adjustments point. to their adjustments because you know they're going to adjust. Yeah. You know, if I'm putting up, you know, 100 yards in the first half, you are going to change something on me, so I don't do that in the second half. You know, cause, but I'm going to know you're going to make some type of adjustment to me, and if I'm in the zone, I don't care what you do. I'm going to make an adjustment to what you're adjusting to. That's the game what? of football. It's a chess match. Who's going to win <clears> the chess match? Right now, other teams are playing chess, and we're playing checkers. Well, you're right. And you know what, G, what you said is very important. Remember, we used to look at film. They don't call it film anymore. But we come in and look at film, try to analyze each and every player, each and every play. And then, as you said, we stay after and work on it. You don't see that anymore. That went the way of the six-week training camp or the way that you can't hit more than a certain time during the year. That's the things that I think collective bargaining made, not just this team, but that happened with a lot of teams. So really, when you look at this, we're analyzing what they can do or what they have done the five games. What we have to do is analyze what can they do the next 11 games to get respect, get their respect back and everything. And one thing we do know, I hate to say it, but that defensive line, they, they got it. that may be the place that they need to start with. That may be where your leaders are. That may be the playmakers that you need. Then you get to that running game. Take Adrian Peterson and put him in there. Let him pound some people. Pound it early and make them make the mistakes the second half. That's what we're not doing. Yeah. Tony, we're going to take a little break here. And I know uh, you want to talk about our next uh, segment because it has to do with special teams. And there is one area of the Redskins that Bill Belichick envies greatly, and that is our field goal kicker and our punter. <laughs>
Geico makes it easy to get help when I need it. With licensed agents available 24-7, it's not just easy. It's having Jerome Bettis on your flag football team easy. Go get him, bus! <laughs> Ooh. Come on, bus. Come on. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna get the flag. I got your flag. I'm gonna get your flag. It's Geico Easy. Yeah. With licensed agents available 24 7. 49 nothing! Oh! I tell you what, anytime you can average 50 yards of punt, you're doing your job. And as we said, the special teams, they've been doing pretty good, but we're still waiting for that Mike Nelms play. We're still waiting for someone to break something off. We're still waiting for them to change the game because sometimes your special teams can change the game. They're not doing badly, but we need a little bit more out of them, guys. Well, the word on the street is that Donna wants Steven Sims to return kickoffs and punts. I mean, that's spreading around Washington right now because he's a very dynamic player, right, Donna? Yeah, I think that you saw what he did where, that, where they exerted him in on the offense right now. And I think that when he has the ball in his hand, Gary and I was talking with Mike um, during the break about what he did. It wasn't like he created that touchdown, uh, what he did in trying to scoot under the defenders and everything because, as Gary said, they had him pegged uh, on that play, but he made something happen. And I think that that's what you need almost on the special teams on the punt returns along with the kickoff, which he does that, is to get him back there and see what he can do. And I think that you'll be surprised uh, the energy and the hunger that he has to put have the ball in his hands right now. You know, it's interesting you should say that because one of the things that he said in the post-game uh, interview that he uh, conducted was that during the week, and this is sticking up for Jay now, they had put in all kind of plays with mm -hmm. Steven Sims Jr. So that was just one of the plays. Yeah. So they were trying to integrate him more into the game. So there were new plays in the game this week. I mean, they were trying. Yeah. Uh, well, but it, I saw one that ran. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I mean... I mean and I tell you, and you do need to get your playmakers involved in so oh, many yeah. ways. And, Jerry, you'll remember that we had Super, Monty Coleman, and he was so good that they didn't want him to start in no one place because right. he could do it. They need to find those type of players on this team because what's coming up with them, you got the Dolphins, which everybody say, oh, this is an easy, winnable game. But right now, no game is winnable. And what you have to just take a look at is this team got to look forward to it, that they don't want at the end of the year be 1-15 or – Two and, and 14 or something like that. They need to turn this around now. Now, as we look back in retrospect and we look a little bit at Gruden's record, this is right in the, the mode that he's in. He's either 9 and 7 or 7 and 9 right in that mode. That's just the way it is. And maybe the thought process in bringing in new blood and maybe Callahan, maybe Callahan will do such a good job that he will be the coach. But what we have to look at now, we look at the defense, played a little bit better. Front three, I really like what they're doing. I think if the defensive backfield can do better and the linebacker can get to the ball and cover tight ends better. Offense, you got a lot of new players, so you run that ball. Don't let your best players that you got be on the bench because you don't want to run the ball. You have to run the ball and get that toughness back. Special teams, we can't complain, but at the same time, we need a little bit more for you. We're struggling right now, guys. Get us to change the field. Get us in there. Get us where we can go and score easily. And now the game's coming up. They still got to go back through the division. They still got some powerful teams, and they got some teams they could beat. So you take it one at a time. What can they do with these Dolphins? They got to play a full game. Motivation, Tony. It has to be motivation. If I'm Callahan, I do want to become the head coach of the Washington Redskins. Not just for the remainder of the season, for the rest of my life, I want to become the coach of the Washington Redskins. So I got to be able to motivate my players to go out there, incentivize them to go out there and be like, you know what? 11 and 5 gets me in. Mm -hmm. 11 and 5 gets me in at the end of the day. So why not run it all? Why not run the tape? Why not win 11 games in a row? Because it gets me in. The motivation mm -hmm. factor has to be a part of it. And if my coach can motivate me, if my teammates can motivate me, I play better. I just do. 
don't care what the situation is. I got to be that guy when you get in a certain situation where you need it, I want it. I want to be the guy who wants that situation to occur, and I'm going to be the guy that's going to get you out of it. Once they get that mindset and the players get that mindset that they want to be the guy, they're going to win a lot more games. Yeah, Tony, you got old school take it back over for the Washington Redskins in Callahan. And, and the thing about it, you look at these last two weeks, they've only scored 10 points, four against the Giants, well, three against the Giants and seven against New England. So the question is, who is the best person at quarterback right now? Because that's a decision that they've got to make, too. Do you put in Haskins and, and get him ready for to be your future quarterback? Or do you stay with Colt McCoy, who probably knows the offense a little better than uh, the other two? Or do you go back to Case Keenan, who's had more experience as a NFL quarterback? Who do you go with for your quarterback? If Colt McCoy is healthy and can play, I go with him. He knows his offense. He's shown that he can win in this league. He's a veteran, and I think that he'll do a pretty good job. Haskins, I'd like to see him get a try, but I would not do that until I'm sure the season is over. And then I don't want to put him in a situation where he's getting crushed or he's just getting ran over or he has no help. So until you get all the compliment of people back around that can help him, better offensive line and different things, I would, wouldn't put him in. But I think Colt McCoy could get the job done. And, G, you're exactly right. Motivate me. If you're going to win 11 games in a row, that means you can't lose to the Dolphins. Am I correct with that? That is 100% correct, Tony. At the end of the day, you have to show your teammates. You have to show this community. You have to show the Redskin fans who come out and do support you. Even though we don't have 80,000 fans in the stadium anymore that are all Redskin fans, the way mm -hmm. to get them back is just win, baby. When you win, mm -hmm. they will start slowly coming back. And when you put together a string of wins, they will all start to come back. And next thing you know is it'll be the toughest ticket to get again in Washington, D.C. I hope so. Winning cures, winning cures yeah. all the elements when it comes yeah. to playing sports. Yes, it does. I, I have breaking news, Tony. Uh, as yeah. always, you are the prognosticator of all prognosticators. Breaking <laughs> news. Colt McCoy is your starting quarterback this week against Hello. the Dolphins. There you go. I like that. I and, like that. And, <laughs> you know, there was an interesting article written in the Miami Herald that talked about the Miami Dolphins not wanting to win, that they play like they don't want to win. And if you can't beat, take a look at, at the Dolphins. They call this game the matchup the Tua Bowl because they're both playing for the first-round pick. But the Dolphins are 32nd on defense, Tony. They are 31st on offense. And the cool thing about this, everybody talked about, oh, we have to have quarterback Josh Rosen in Washington. Well, he's playing for Miami. We're going to get a good look at him. We're going to get a good look at what we didn't go after. But they do have a wonderful wide receiver in Devontae Parker, and that is a nice little hookup there they've got going on. And they do have a great defensive tackle in Kendrick Norton. So they do have some tools there with which to win. But They're giving it, up 40-some points, right? Yes, they are. <laughs> They've been trounced every game. But it's literally as if they don't want to win, Tony. I, I, but you know, Mike, I think that's a little bit far-fetched. I don't think I've ever seen anybody that want to get out there in their profession and they don't want to win unless they're really trying to get not just the coach fired, they're going to be <laughs> fired. They want to leave. But you know what? I, I don't believe that. I wouldn't buy into that. You look at the components they got, and they have, some, and as you said, a good wide receiver, good defensive tackle. Even though they're 31 and 32 in, in certain positions and categories, this is still a professional team. So you look at them as they are a professional team standing in your way and not worrying about if they want to win or not. Well, I, I mean, if they don't win this game, Tony, well, this is the ugly bowl. It's our job to make it the yeah. pretty bowl. I think. <laughs> exactly. There you go. I mean, that's there what they're go. calling at the end of the day. I don't care. I don't care if we win three nothing. You know, I don't care if we win two nothing because the defense got a safety. I just want to win. You know, I think it's just good to because you get one win, then you can get two. You get two wins, then you get three. You get three wins, then you get four. I know people say not to look ahead, but I was never that guy. I always looked into the future. I wanted to be this guy at a certain age when I was five, five and a half. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a professional football player. So I believe in looking ahead, but making those things happen, putting in the work in so when you look ahead, you know what's coming. At the end of the day, you, I'm going to make right. my future my reality. And then you look at the teams that's playing against each other this week in Philadelphia and Minnesota, mm -hmm. Dallas and New York. It could be some big changes there. Mm -hmm. now, Dallas has lost two in a row. New York is who we thought they were, I tell you. And then you got Philadelphia. One week they look good, the next week they look bad. 
What if all these teams lose and Washington win? It wouldn't look as bad. They may be one and five, but then this team may be two and three. Another one may be one and four. But at the same time, each week counts. And you look at you got to keep a look at your the opponent because now people to figure Dallas out. And as I said, Philadelphia is inconsistent, and maybe Cousins to take care of them. And then all Washington need to do is worry about what they need to do with Miami. You hit it right, you hit it right there, Tony, when, when you said that you can own and control what's in your house. And I think that with Callahan now at the rim, because when you looked at Adrian Peterson after that loss against New England, this was a frustrated guy because of the fact he hasn't had the ball in his hands. But now you're probably going to re-energize him because now finally you're going to run the ball again. And you know what? You heard in his vernacular, he said that they put us in the positions they want us in. In more ways, and now I'm paraphrasing, but he was saying that he could be in another position and be doing better. In other words, like you said, running the ball more. This guy still got an opportunity with 11 games. But if I can see him still getting 1,000 yards, I can see them really starting to rack up the yardage on the ground, and that's going to open up the passing game. That's why Colt McCoy is the best one to start this week. Yeah, we're going to take a break, Tone, and when we come back, I want you to tell me and Gary tell me and Donna tell me how in the world they're going to run the ball with no tight ends. All they have is Jeremy Sprinkle and no one else. How are you going to run the ball? You got no fullback. You have, what are you going to run, Jumbo? How are you going to run the ball? The tight end eligible. (laughs) (laughs) No, great presentation, Tim. Uh, could you email me the part about Geico, making it easy to switch and save hundreds? Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know my name, dear. <laughs> of course I know your name. I just get you mixed up with the other guy. What's his name? What's your name? Switch to Geico. You could save 15% or more on car insurance. Could you just tell me? I want this to be over. Welcome back. Hey, Mike, you had a good question, and you said, how do you run the ball without tight ends? Well, you know what you do. You take your offensive lineman, and you put him in there, and he's a tackle eligible, and you put one at the other end, and you pin your ears back, and you run that ball every time you get a chance, and you make those guys start looking for that. Sooner or later, you get one of the tight ends back, but at the same time, you have to adapt to the situation. Well, would you bring Anderson in? You know, you used him as a fullback on some of those uh, short yardage situations last year. I haven't seen him do that this year. Can you use Anderson? Well, you, know, you got to ask G-Man that. G, no, but I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I think you utilize the person, quite honestly, that wants to play. You exactly. utilize the guy. You utilize Thanks. the person who's going to, you know, you know what? This is my opportunity to make the team. This is my opportunity to be like, you know what? I'm not replaceable. It's out there. I know. I used to be that guy. The Redskins brought me in. They brought me in to return punts and kicks. I was supposed to come in to take Mike's place. Mike Nams was one of the best punt returners and Brian Mitchell that I've ever seen. So I, but I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to play receiver. So I made it a point to make sure that you're going to notice me as a receiver. I'm going to be the guy. So I think whoever will come in and play those positions, it's a perfect opportunity for them now to become the guy at that position. It's just that simple. But who's going to be it? Sometimes it's that guy that you think is not supposed to be there that becomes the guy. Otis Wansley, not supposed to be the guy, but became our special team's leader. Exactly. Just kind of, just, but he know what? He knew that was going to be his niche. 
your niche is your niche. If you're really good at that thing, you're going to make sure that they notice and the rest of the league notices as well. And you know, when you talk about the rest of the league, G, let's talk about just what you just said was so educational. You fans listening to that. This is a man to be going to the Hall of Fame soon. He caught all these balls doing. This is what teams need to do. Bring these guys in instead of bringing in their cousins and their friends and stuff and let these football players not only help them physically, but help them mentally. These guys got a wealth of knowledge that they could give these young guys. And a team right now that is is 0-5, what could it hurt? Why don't you bring a Gary Clark and let him work with the receiver? Just talk to him. That receiver coach can't get mad because at the end of the year, they may change him anyway. Why don't you bring in a Charles Mann on one of them? Let them work with the defensive lineman. Bring in some of those old hogs and and, and talk to the, the offensive lineman. Let them not only know the physicality of how you want to play, but the mental aspect that you need to be a winner. Tony, you said something important. You said bring in these guys like the Charles Manns, Gary Clarks, even yourself. Uh, the thing that I like about that is this team is young, so a lot of them don't know what it means to be winning on the level that you all did as far as the playoffs, getting to the playoffs and winning Super Bowls. So if you bring some of those guys in to kind of talk to this team right now uh, to, you know, show them the way as far as this is how we became Super Bowl champs, maybe that's what's needed because they don't know that. Well, you know why they don't know it as well. They're making a lot more money than we made at that time, so the Super Bowl is not the real thing that's in their eyesight right now. It's getting paid. And I'm not saying that for every player, but here we got guys, and Gary will tell you and all of we made pretty good money when we played, but we always played for extra money. Doc talk about it all the time. Right now these players are paid so well that I don't know if they even think about the second season. That's what we call it. They need to think about that issue because you know what? You can have all the money all of fame but you got that ring from now on and that's something that a lot of people never get the opportunity to get you got to start thinking that because football careers are very very short you know one thing i wanted to bring up that's really fascinating i mean poor mike shanahan he got run out of town but do you know tony in that shanahan tree you've got three top top head coaches you have of course kyle shanahan who we're going to see in two weeks with san francisco mm -hmm. coming in here You've got Sean McVay, and you have LaFleur, who's doing particularly well in Green Bay right now. Now you have the next great mind that's coming out of the Redskins, Kevin O'Connell. And I think the cool thing to watch in the game against Miami and San Francisco is how O'Connell matches up against Kyle when he comes here and see if we he's going to be calling the plays. And Jay was calling the plays. Now O'Connell's going to be calling the plays. This is the next great offensive mind in this long tree. It's going to be fascinating to see how O'Connell does and to see if it makes a difference, the kind of plays you call and the kind of offense you run. Well, you know, it's going to be interesting. But now, Kyle, I saw him make a mistake a couple of years ago. They cost Atlanta the, the uh, Super Bowl. They had first and goal on 20 with about a minute and a half left, and he kept passing. So... You can say he's in that tree, but he hasn't won anything yet. He needs to win something, get to the playoffs, and then you can put him in that tree. Mm -hmm. So that's another beatable team. But if you look at it, there are some good young coaches out there. But at the same time, I still land on the fact that I feel like it's some good former players out there that can help your team. Well, who would you who would you draft next year, Tony? Assuming now you've got when are you going to play Haskins? I think we all want to come to some conclusion as to when Haskins is going to come in because you heard, of course, you heard what Callahan said today. He's not ready, and that surprised everybody in town because we just assumed that by firing Jay, all of a sudden Dwayne Haskins is going to be the starter, and he said he's not ready. Maybe in a few weeks he'll be ready. When do you put Dwayne in the game to find out if indeed he's your quarterback next year? Because if you finish with only two or three or four wins, there are a lot of good quarterbacks in this draft. Do you draft another one and have a competition? No, they got too many. They got too many holes on the offensive line that they need to address that versus looking at another quarterback. But I think that this is nothing new about Haskin, Dwayne Haskin, as far as if he's ready because. Uh, Kevin O'Donnell, uh, O'Connell, and, and Coach Gruden, and, and 
uh, Callahan have all basically said the same thing, that he's not quite ready. And we saw him in the game that he came in against the Giants. He made some mistakes. He made some good throws and everything. But when you're going up against some of those defensive-minded uh, coaches and they're going to throw some everything at you and some of the veterans and quarterbacks are going to get hit hard too, you just don't – I think Tony said it right. You just don't want to throw him in there in a bad situation and mess him up for his future uh, when you look forward and, and on down the road. I'm not even thinking about the future. Colt McCoy right now is the best option. And as I said, if he's well – you guys will be surprised. And the other thing is, you're going to put Haskins in there, but the season's not over yet. You're 0-5. Yes, it doesn't look good, but Gary said it best. You take a game at a time, and you you motivate me to win each and every game. They can look up and be 5-5, five and five, and if that happened and other teams have come back to them, then they're right in the hunt. So you don't put him in right now as if the season is over. Now, maybe when you want to evaluate him later in the year, that'll be great. But right now, if Colt is the best opportunity you have to win, you owe it to yourself, to your fans, and your players to put the best opportunity in. Yeah, I mean, if they beat Miami, as Gary said, there'll be more fans in the stands when San Francisco comes to town. Can we talk about the picks this week? Because inside the picks are some great games. I have never in my life, Tony, seen two people torture over these picks this All week. All I know it, is the I, score was kind of wrong. I could do a wrong. script in an hour and a half, and it took 20 minutes for them to make these picks, Tony. This I is, just want to know how you, you're you leading every week, Mike. No, I'm not leading. Gary's leading at 12 and 8. Let's, gee, let's gee. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's take a look at them. Tony's 9 and 11. Gary, I mean, sorry, Donna's 10 and 10. Gary is 12 and 8. And I am 11 and 9. But let's talk about these games. Carolina at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, one week, puts up 55 points on Los Angeles, on the Rams. And then all of a sudden, they go home. So who do you like in Carolina, Tampa Bay? I mean, uh, Tony, you're picking Carolina. Why? Yeah, I pick Carolina. I think Carolina can get it done. They got the multi-purpose. Running back down there, they're playing with another quarterback. At the same time, their defense, they've been trying to build it up over the last couple of years. Tampa Bay is just a team that seems like when they get to a certain point, you go back to Lovey Smith a few years ago. They bought him and didn't give him opportunity to do anything because they wanted to hire somebody else. Their team is in disarray, and they seem like they'll always be. And it starts with their quarterback. He has to grow up. That's what happens when you take a quarterback and put him in as a rookie and make him play. He never matures sometimes. Some of them do, some of them do not. Well, t- uh, we're just going to give the, we got only a minute left, but Tony is going to win the picks this year. Mark my words. He's Seattle <laughs> at Cleveland. He's picking Seattle. Houston at KC. He's picking KC. <laughs> Philadelphia, Minnesota. He's picking Minnesota. And San Francisco at Rams. He's going with the Rams. Tony, you got about 30 seconds left for your tip. What Kool-Aid is he drinking? Well, my he's tip is for all you players out there. You know what? You can sit back and you can look at now the head coach is, is fired. I'll take it off. All, my tip to you is He's not going to be the last one fired. You better play for your job. We'll be back next week, and when we come back, we'll do more with the Black 14. But most of all, we will be talking about a win. So as I always say, you don't say goodbye. You say, in a minute.